Following the flood, the first had been listing ever further towards the light, towards stasis. The end was in sight. Enter man and his indomitable spirit. He would haul the world back from the brink. And adding his lump and weight to the power of growth, he duly tipped the scales, if only by a fraction. Yet a fraction was enough to spoil the perfect imbalance needed to bring about a rejoining. <sighs> Had mankind continued to live in idleness under Vorthry's rule, oh. But you had to come and ruin it all! Thanks to your meddling, light supremacy is in doubt, and our painstakingly laid plans are in tatters! Well, I should begin by thanking you for confirming Uriange's theories on the inner workings of the Calamity. He will be most pleased. As for what happens next, might I suggest you admit defeat and walk away? Happy to let me go, are you? Because the murderous glint in your eye suggests otherwise. Indeed, it is enough to make me think better of confronting you alone. Look, it did cross my mind to simply side with Vorthry and kill you all. But that's no different from what La Habre did. And we all know how well that ended for him. And so, while it is liable to be troublesome, I have settled upon a different approach. Cooperation. I will not raise a hand to hinder your hunt for the Light Wardens. If you desire it, I will even lend you my knowledge and strength. Since time immemorial, you and yours have labored to rejoin the Thirteen Shards, at the cost of countless lives. Do you expect us to believe that your objective has suddenly changed? Nay, our objective is the same as it ever was. Though I dare say, you do not know our motive. A war waged without knowledge of the enemy is no war. It is mere bloodletting. Just once, might we not seek to find common ground? For good or ill, I am immortal. Provided I have the inclination, I can always begin anew, scheme and conspire to my heart's content. But this time I thought that I might instead try to see eye to eye, to understand what drives the hero of the source, to determine if our goals are truly incompatible. So come, shed your preconceptions. See beyond the unscrupulous villains you take us for. When all is said and done, we may find ourselves pleasantly surprised the proud discoverers of a path of cooperation rather than opposition. Thou hast delivered thy proposal, and we would not dismiss it outright. If I may offer thee counsel, however, to make thy case via an illusion reflecteth poorly upon thy sincerity. My apologies. You will forgive me if I'm not entirely at ease in the presence of a famed Assian Slayer. I felt it only prudent to take precautions. Nonetheless, your counsel is duly noted. I take my leave, friends. Rest assured, we shall meet again soon.
From the Exarch, is it? And with that mirror of his, he can watch your every move, you know? You probably think you're talking to yourself. And still, he's keeping you well fed. Judging by his people's faith in him, he seems to be a decent sort. But so much about him remains shrouded in mystery. Like what was he doing back in my day? There was no such person when I was around. Mm. A lot's happened since the Flood, though. Since I was... set adrift. I know little more than you do of this city's history in the Exarch's past. Not that it matters. It's Emmett Selk we should be concerned about. When our world was about to be consumed by light, the Asin in white appeared before us. He said that the only way for us to live on was to bring about the rejoining. Desperate as we were, we heeded his words, not realizing that the Flood was of the Asian's own making. They cannot be trusted, none of them. But Emmett Selk had one thing right. One should not fight blindly. That's what we did, and it cost us everything we held dear. You mean Seto? Well, that's... That... He's done some growing. When we were traveling together, he was nowhere near as big. And he obviously couldn't speak. I had no idea how much that medallion meant to him. What about you, anyway? You must have a friend like Seto. Chocobo, perhaps? Come on, you tell me something for a change. No matter how far he goes, man cannot resist looking back on the path he has walked. The untold stories and secrets of the past can be more alluring than the promise of tomorrow. And so he braves the forests of Raktika in search of mystery and wonder. Of Ronka, to which all seekers of hidden truths are inevitably drawn. We have arrived. Vast though these woods may be, they are, by and large, uninhabitable. Not so the swamps of Sidia, however. No lands must remain beyond our grasp. Go forth. Conquer. Rule. Forgive me. A sudden pang of nostalgia for those halcyon days. Exploring virgin territories, subjugating primitive peoples, all for the glory of Garlemald. If you've brought your ivory standard, I'll be happy to tell you where to stick it. Can we not simply take a moment to enjoy the view together? Or would you rather I spied on you from the shadows? <sighs> Much more of this, and I may very well begin to regret my show of good faith. If... if you really want to stay, then help us fight. 
Mm, no, I think not. I am an observer, nothing more. Even shielded by the shadows of these boughs, I feel the light's presence most keenly. To accompany you is taxing enough. To fight is out of the question. I will suffer your company if I must, but not your commentary. These Sinators, they're not like the others. There's a reason for that. Lower your weapons, please. We mean you no harm. How is it they can speak? It's a Sin Eater trick. They mean to kill us all. Perhaps they speak the truth. Oh, for the love of... I had hoped that by accompanying you we might come to understand one another. But all I have come to understand is that you have a knack for inflaming the natives. You've committed the cardinal sin of boring me. And so, I retire to the shade. Good luck. There! Did you see that one disappear? Uh, I think I preferred La Habrea. Enough. Runar, report. Master Matoya! We apprehended them as you ordered, but... Are you certain these are Sin Eaters? The intense light of the ether I saw was unmistakable. If not Sin Eaters, then what? It is passing queer that Yishtola should mistake us for the enemy, is it not? Mayhap it hath been too long since last she beheld the radiance of thine ether. Master Matoya, hath time truly made strangers of us? Nay, I recognize you, Urianger, Thancred. And this is Minfilia of the First, of whom you spoke before. Just so. And knowing as thou must that we come in peace, might I prevail upon thee to have thy comrades lower their arms? First explain this other presence in your company, the one I know not. There is but one manner of creature in this world whose ether is suffused with such an abundance of light. Mine apologies, Master Matoya, but thou art mistaken. Before thee standeth our dearest comrade, the truest hero among us. Though he is but recently arrived here in the first, not one but two Light Wardens have already perished by his most puissant hand. It cannot be. Master Matoya? Lower your weapons.
Forgive us this hostile welcome. Come. I would give you a proper introduction to Raktika and its people.